How's it going everyone? It's your boy Dak908 aka the Dig Dug himself and today ladies and gents we're looking at Brute Tigrix. Now Brute Tigrix he's an interesting monster. He made his debut a long time ago but in this particular game they changed him up quite a bit and truth be told I'm not exactly sure if I'm okay with all the changes that they made but then again it doesn't really matter. It is the fifth generation. Lots of monsters have changes to them. This is just one of the few. Uh, actually, no, there, I take it back. There's one thing I'm really not necessarily a fan of because it's kind of been the exact same in every iteration since then, even since when they had the ability to change hitboxes or certain things or whatever. But nevertheless, let's talk about Brute Tigrix. So, Brute Tigrix is a subspecies that have Tigrix, and truth be told, unless you're actually fighting him in an event quest, unfortunately, well, fortunately, I guess you could say, that's what I'm doing right here. You can essentially only find him in the Guiding Lands. Well, not only, but you first usually find him in the Guiding Lands. Granted, this character is high enough to actually fight him within the Guiding Lands. The thing is, I I don't really like the Guiding Lands all that much. So I didn't really put a lot of stock into it. But if you want to fight him naturally, uh, you will have to go into the Guiding Lands, grind that a little bit. And it's not wrong with grinding out the Guiding Lands. It's just that I personally just don't like really doing it too, too much. Nevertheless, here we go. So, Brute Tigrix, he is a subspecies of the Tigrix, and a lot of the things are exactly the same, save for the fact that his coloring is wildly different, and his roar that he was most notable for is now used as an attack in two forms. Now, the one thing they really changed a lot about Tigrix in the 5th generation is the fact that his roar is very puny, compared to what it used to be before. Before, it would actually be this huge daunting thing that you would actually have to worry about. In this game, you only kind of have to worry about it if you're stepping, like, like if you're just too close. Well, if not, excuse me, not if you're too close. If you're in that per particular area, because the hitbox of his roar is wildly different. It used to be grand. I mean, it would be this huge 270 degree arc around him, and it would expand outwards to, like, maybe... 10 15 maybe even 20 feet it, it, it was huge now it doesn't even if you're close to him you will only be affected by you know the, the fact that it's loud as opposed to the fact that it's actually a damaging attack so you can actually get away from it a lot easier especially if you're really close to him but then again it actually really helps him uh, with the fact that he actually likes to like quickly dash backwards and then roar because if he can dash backwards far enough and leave you in a, in a, posi in a position rather where in which you kind of were too close to get hit by it before. Now you very well could be hit by it. I've been hit by it just like this uh, a few times myself. Uh, so it's not incredibly tough for him to actually accomplish. But nevertheless, if you're really close onto him, all you essentially need is high grade earplugs. And you'd walk in no problem essentially fighting him. Now, the next thing I, need, I really should talk about when it comes to this roar, because this, a standard attacks is very, 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 very akin to that of Tigrix. So if you guys remember Tigrix at all, it's essentially all the same stuff. But uh, his his standard roar, excuse me, his his other roar is, it's, oddly enough, it's kind of like a bean, where he takes in a huge breath, and then he roars, um, starting from his far left side, I believe bringing it all the way to his far right side now the lighting of the map that you're in will dictate how well you can see it unfortunately in the elders recess the lighting wasn't too perfect so when he does do it you don't really see it too much but you will note that it is a wildly different war um there are a couple of times where i'm actually in this hunt right here where i'm blocking it but by the skin of my teeth so and this is actually attack right here, I believe. Oh, no, no, that's not it. I apologize. You, you'll, you'll know it. You'll know it. This is the one. That's the attack right there. I knew it was coming up really soon. But it's like a beam of sound. The range on it isn't intense. It's about maybe the range of his actual roar. So m maybe a little bit more than his roar. But it's quote unquote a solid beam. Because it's sound. It's not really a solid. But um from his mouth all the way to the end, it's a complete hitbox. So you can get hit with it no matter where you are if you're within the realm of the beam. Uh, the, of the beam. So that's kind of cool. Nevertheless, uh, all things considered, that attack is a very damaging attack, among other things. Uh, so if you're like not too keen on blocking or dodging, uh, you better become so. Because, I mean, Tiger's whole stick is to push his, 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 his attacks into your face as often as possible that's why he charges you down that's why he roars at you 
and so on and so forth. Um, other than that, again, like I said, he's very consistent. Standard Tigrex has a lot of the same moves where he'll just rush at you, turn around, rush again, turn around, rush again, push rocks at your direction, uh, so on and so forth. Depending on where he's located within the world, the rocks take on different properties. So if he's in the Elder's Recess where there's fire uh, or lava, if you will, if he pushes those rocks, those rocks can give you uh, fire blight. Uh, but other than that, other than his attacks, it's standard fare. Uh, so let's talk about the gear. It's actually quite nice. So the first thing I want to show you is the fact that the Brute Tigrex Alpha Armor and the Beta Armor essentially have the exact same skills except, well, you know, with Beta, you tend to lose a bit of skill for a little bit of slot. And in this case, I, I strongly suggest you go all Beta in this because look at the difference. The only thing you're losing when you go from Alpha to Beta, one point to attack, one point to health boost, one point to recovery up, and one point to agitator. These are fairly common decorations you can just you probably already have right now, and you could gem in to a weapon, or if you don't necessarily care for a particular one of them, like recovery up maybe, or maybe even agitator, you can just swap it out and just go full force. Or if you just if you already have plenty of attack, or you don't really care that much about attack, you can go off with one attack and just continue as is, or. If you want, you can mix and match between Brute Tigrex and Standard Tigrex armor because I do hear that it actually makes a really nice combination of uh, of skills to have. Nevertheless, I think the armor is fantastic. It's one of those armors you kind of put on, and it's just good. You know, it's just it's just fine. It, there's nothing wrong with it. It has great skills, has a fair amount of slots and everything, and it looks pretty nice. So if, at least for the females, the alpha gives us this look here, and for the beta, we're looking at honestly, in my opinion, my preferred uh, look where in which the the shoulder the shoulder uh well the pauldrons i believe how they curl over i kind of like that look a little bit more and you also get a cape capes are always nice nevertheless so the whole point of this hit of this set right here is essentially just like how brute tigers fights is continued onslaught continue well standard fare of health more so than that rather so that way you can actually stay in the fight a wings exploit attack boost agitator things like that they increase your attack depending on whether monster is enraged or not with agitator or just increase your attack in general because you have attack now we can exploit again we all know what that's about that's about exploiting the weakness of the monster hitting weak spots to do additional crit damage well not crit damage additional crit chance and then if it, the part is actually already weakened by the clutch claw does more damage itself to the part so that's actually really cool free mill is actually a really interesting skill you should think about free mill secret allows you if you put if you gem that in all the way you have like a, what is it like a, a 75 percent chance to return the items you use back to your pocket that is actually incredibly od meaning you can go in there with a full stock of items and probably run that same stock of items for like five or six quests because you're not really using any so you could never run out of mega potion or something like that. Incredibly good skill to have, especially that high up. I like running just the stand 25% joint, and it makes me happy knowing that sometimes I get to keep a mega potion or a max potion or something like that. 75% of the time, definitely worth the effort. Uh, now let's talk about his weapons. His weapons are interesting. Uh, the one thing about his weapons that make him stand out among others is the fact that it has incredibly high attack. It has some of the, some of the highest attack in the game, as well as some of the highest sharpness for a weapon natural purple is the thing 10 times out of 10 that's facts uh it also has a sleep awakened element you need to awaken the sleep in there which is interesting but it's a thing nevertheless however the small caveat to this is the, small the large caveat to this is that its affinity is abysmal and it does not get better the higher you go up with it the worse the affinity gets i think uh for most it's like negative 30 affinity or something like that very akin to how the Devil Joe weapons used to be. Well, still are, actually. So, if affinity really doesn't bother you that much, uh, depending on what type of weapon you have, like, be it, like, Greatsword as opposed to, like, Dual Blades or something like that, where in which negative 30, negative 40 affinity is terrible for Dual Blades because you hit so often, um, then, yeah, run the weapons. But if you just really like running elementless weapons, then, sure, you could run this guy's stuff as well, and it could be very good for you. Granted, depending if you don't want to have Handicraft on or Handicraft off or something like that i would suggest you use a different weapon um safi jiva weapons are actually pretty good but then again the thing that makes them not as fantastic is the fact that they always come with the element so maybe if you're running elementless you might want to think of uh shara because shara's weapons are actually really nice it's just that sometimes they 
Well, not sometimes. They have great attack, good sharpness. They just don't come with the natural element. You have to awaken those things. So, nevertheless, the gear is great. I recommend all of it, save for the weapons in certain situations. If, if you already have a lot of affinity and it's not really going to bother you too much to lose a little bit more, or if you don't really care too much about affinity and you really just care about the full-on attack, the big fat numbers, then sure, run it. Also, free mill is probably the coolest secret ability to have on a set all day. So I recommend you at least give it a try for its sake. So to wrap it up, Brute Tigrix is a monster who comes from a very strong pedigree. It was one of the best monsters to ever come out because he was so relentless in attacks. And coming from a, a standard fair monster, being the standard Tigrex, move over to a subspecies, the Brute Tigrex, using his roar as an actual means of attack was incredible. The one thing I will say that the world didn't transition over properly, obviously, is his roar. It's not as powerful as it used to be, it's not as good as it used to be, it's not as daunting, it's not as terrifying, it's not anything as to what it used to be. And some people would say, well, Dak, that's evolution. And I would say that's actually regression, because it was the thing that made Brute Tigrix different, the fact that his roar was what it was. This time around, it's not like that at all. I mean, his roar is a means of attack, it's just not as scary as it used to be. And Tigrix was always a scary monster. The fact that his roar isn't as scary as it used to be makes me feel some type of way nevertheless if i look past that i can just look at the monster himself as a means of good armor and maybe a, a decent weapon i can just kind of look at it and just go from there because not everything needs to be the monster is the most splendiferous thing in the universe i don't know who, who, who thought a game like monster hunter would have the monsters be frontline and center be the best thing and the most gracious thing you should actually look at who knows not me capcom nevertheless it's still a good monster. You're still going to get a great fight. You're still going to get lots of cards out of this. He's going to hit you very hard. He's going to slap you quite often. That's just what he does. It's been bred into his DNA. It's what he is. He is a tiger. There's a different tiger out there who does this, his job uh, very well as well. We're talking about Molten Tigers. Nevertheless, he will never make his way to the fifth generation because, I mean, well, he was like a fourth generation thing. One off, I should say. Literally, he was in four ultimate and like nothing else. Kind of like uh, Cetus, who will be only in Try and 3 Ultimate and then nothing else. Because, you know, underwater combat will never make his way back to the mainline games. But with that being said, everyone, uh, let's just wrap it up like this. Brute Tigrix, amazing monster, amazing fight, incredible armor. Mm, kind of suspect weapons, but at the end of the day, it's some good, high-quality stuff. I recommend everyone try and make it at least once. You have not the weapons, his armor for certain, because it's just really, really good. Especially if you're just trying to go through uh, the Guiding Lands and you want to ha have a set of armor that's just like, give me as much attack as possible. Because the thing with the Guiding Lands is you kind of want to have as much attack as possible. So that way you can go through as many monsters as possible, because it's a lot of grinding in the Guiding Lands. I myself would actually run a mixed Tiger set. Get my attack up nice and high. Get my weakness exploit nice and high. Put fortitude on there. Cart twice for free. And then just have the most attack I could possibly get on the set. Uh, almost ever. But with that being said everyone. Brute Tigrix. A great monster. I uh. Yeah. Just a great monster. I like his cape. I use his cape a lot. Back and forth. Spin. But with that being said. Tell me guys. What do you think about Brute Tigrix? Let it. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, I really really want to know. Because I mean. He's a monster I'm, I'm very de decisive on. Divisive, I should say. Actually, I'm split all the way down the middle. Because they, they I feel like they, they they gimped my mans, you know? I was never a huge Tyrex fan. He's actually one of my least favorite monsters of all time. But at least show my man some respect. Anyway, what do you guys think? Let me know. It's been your boy, Dak908, a.k.a. The Dig Dug himself. I'll see you on the next one. Uh, the next one will... I don't know who the next one will be. It'll probably be Young Garuga. It'll probably be Young Garuga. If not, I'll probably skip and do the metal uh, Raytheon, well, gold Raytheon, silver Athlos, who knows. Well, that being said, you all take care. Oh, let me say this. Um, there weren't any videos because, not because I, I retired yet. I was just chilling, and I didn't want to make any videos. I was just kind of playing games. Also, um, I'm going to do two videos where it's me giving you guys updates on, like, everything. Because I kind of feel I should... Uh, clear the air a bit more for you guys. So once I get to those videos, uh, once those videos come out, we will continue with the standard fair videos. One of those videos will be for Damon X Machina. The other one will be for the Grand Channel and essentially Moss Hunter in general. Uh, uh, more of an explanation as to that, like if I'm retiring or not and how I'm going to go about my retirement. But uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys.
Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. It's been your boy.